Well, welcome everyone. I'm Frank Fear, along with my colleague, Connie Bennett Martin for Women's March Fort Myers. And this is another edition of Community Conversations. Today in a few minutes, we'll be going out to the beautiful campus at Florida Southwestern College to talk with two colleagues who are doing really fine community work, uh, Crystal Siscon and Todd Truax. And they started a program you can see on Facebook Live called Political Prattle. But the really important work isn't just the program, it's what happens before the program and after the program in terms of encouraging people to run for office, helping them, and also focusing on really critical community issues. It's really everything that we hope for and aspire for in community work and if you don't know Crystal and Todd, you'll get to know them a bit more. And even if you know them uh, and have been watching uh, Political uh, Prattle, we're gonna go behind the scenes, get a sense of why they're doing it, what they've accomplished and what they see in the future. So let me go out to the campus right now and turn to Connie Bennett Martin. All right, well, thank you for joining us today. And could you tell me why it is that you do what you do and who you are? Go ahead. Ladies first. <laughs> well, my name is Crystal Siskan, and I've known Todd Truix now for about three years. I met Todd when he was going to run for county commission office, and I was volunteering at the Democratic Party. I helped him with his campaign, and throughout the past three years, we've protested a lot together, and we've both seemed to show up in a lot of the same spaces. Um, we showed up for our friends who were experiencing homelessness. We showed up for Black Lives Matter. We showed up for LGBTQ lives. And we even protested together uh, for women's rights. Todd, Todd has always come when I've called. So when he called me and he said that he had this idea to help us find candidates to help fill these seats and that we were going to go out into the community and find people that we felt would help make things better in our community. I couldn't say no. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Did you say your name? Yeah, I'm Crystal Siskan. There you go. <laughs> she did. She did. I missed it. Beginning. I wasn't paying attention. I was watching yeah. the birds. <laughs> and Todd? I'm Todd. Uh, what do I do? I'm a political operative in my retirement for the blue team. So uh, any any blue candidate uh, in this county, I'm I'm supporting uh, far and wide. And um, Crystal's been my uh, Aid to camp as far as uh, recruiting more candidates, putting the word out, helping me with the tech, uh, putting the videos out, and uh, it's been successful. We've got a lot of slots filled. It's been um, very successful. And so it's it's a relief now that we can now focus on training those candidates uh, as well as finishing up the recruitment on those last few spots that are open. So you're saying that you've recruited quite a few new candidates. What type of candidates have you um, recruited? The best. The best. The smartest. The brightest. The bluest. The bluest. The, the ones with the most heart. Now, because I, if, when you were saying that a lot of what you do, you've shown up in the same places. So obviously, same passions, same drive, same make that work better type of concept. Yeah, we're fix, leaving fix our what's difference. wrong. I know. Well, that's Hearts okay. On the sleeve, you know. <laughs> well, that's, your sleeve that's good to comes out, comes out. <laughs> always yeah. good to care about your fellow man more than sometimes you care about yourself. Yeah. Um, so the candidates that you're looking for, though, are they all local? Are they state, national? What type of candidates are you still looking for? I'd like to say thank you for saying that, Connie. Um, you know, Todd and I are volunteers. We are not paid, but we have both have a deep, I would say, deep commitment to this community. We love our community. We love our fellow people in our community. Most of them. And, and we really have taken it very seriously that people come to us and trust us, that we can lift up what's going on and work together to bring in partners. And I think that it is no doubt that Todd and I are very progressive, but when we were looking at candidates, we were looking at candidates through the lens of who is going to exhibit leadership when times are tough, because anyone can say, oh, I believe in this platform and they can show up to this meeting and they can be groomed. But we've learned through COVID and through all of these civil rights issues that have happened recently, that when things come down to it, it's who the person is. So we're really taking the time to, to look for candidates who we feel have a deep, committed 
passion toward this community much in the way that we do. We scream. Yeah. And we have no problem calling people out. No, neither any party, elected officials of Democrat or Republican side, uh, candidates of Democrat or Republican side. If if we disagree with them, they'll know that we disagree and why we disagree. And how to improve. And can we lend support? Right. We're not just yelling. We're not just we're just not just out to solution oriented. We're out to advocate and help. So the, the candidates, though, that you are still looking for, what type of positions um, are those candidates? Is it counties? Right, right now, we do need someone to run against Ray Rodriguez. In State Senate. State Senate. Okay. Yeah. And we were, we're interested in someone to run for the mayor of Cape Coral. And I think this is a viable position. The current mayor, while I don't think he's done anything terrible, like I'm not saying anything terrible about him, he actually has taken the time to listen to anyone who shows up to speak to him before he goes into a meeting. And that's new for us. Not but really. I like Joe Coviello. He and he, I got did along he listen great. To you? I like Joe Coviello. I can say it out no, loud. He was Republican. He I'm a Democrat. He did pass away. He's no longer he there. He and I were more than speaking terms. He was reasonable. So there are reasonable Republicans. It's not I'm anti a red. Um, oh, I didn't say that. Did I imply well, I'm that? Just, no, but, no, but the current no, no, no. guy is a Republican. Well, I, I didn't get to finish, but <laughs> he on, was he was appointed to the seat. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel that if we put up a strong contender, I think that it is a very winnable seat. The mayor before Cavallo was a Democrat and a woman, Marnie Sawicki. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that we've done a lot of progress in Cape Coral. Cape Coral is the only city that has um, an equality act, a non-discrimination policy. However, it only extends to the city employees. I think that that's something as a county we could do is we could ask for mandates, like proclamations, but I'm, I'm getting beside myself. We're, we're also looking for two city council seats. In a lot of cities. For Fort Myers. In Fort Myers, Benita's Fort Springs. Myers Beach. We have one in Bernice Springs. And Cape Coral City and Council. Three in Cape Coral. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And, and you know, you have to be 18 years of age, go over, <laughs> reside in the district that you're running for, and uh, get 50% of the vote plus one. And that's it. Like, just call us, say, I want to run. Or email my email, Todd at T O D D at Todd, T O D D, Truax, T R U A X dot com. Did you get that plug in? I had to. Do it again. You'd give them your email. You do it again. I'm not giving. I don't know your email. <laughs> he has his own. I have to Tom. look it up. Todd Yeah. What is that? That's from my campaign. It's I love it. I want a campaign. It cost me thirty eight dollars to keep. But it anyway, on. if if they email you, then we can hook them up with support, training, volunteers, mentorship, programs, donors, donors. Speaking of volunteers, what are some of the things that the everyday person can do to help y'all get this? Thank you for asking. Can I do this one? Uh, <laughs> as a candidate. Uh, volunteers are our lifeblood. Um, there are paid uh, campaign managers, and they make a bundle uh, running a do- bunch of different campaigns. I could never afford the fancy ones. Uh, usually, it's friends that I help cover their gas and, and ex- other expenses. So, um, this is what a candidate needs if they're running for office um, a treasurer. So, if you're an accountant or a bean counter, um they could use your help uh because there's a lot of receipts and a lot of documentation that needs to be done and math is simple it's algebra math i don't do the math it's algebra it's not my challenge um i'm not good at filling in excel spreadsheets so (laughs) that's what i needed help with and then you need people to help write postcards Mm -hmm. you need help people to help write letters to the editor you need people to help knock on doors you need people to help make phone calls you need people to help social media social media uh that's key uh twitter Mm -hmm. uh, facebook Instagram, instagram tiktok TikTok, uh, if you got somebody that can help with those things, and then you want a fundraiser. Mm. Because the worst, most difficult thing about campaigning is saying, show me the money. Uh, I mostly self-funded my both of my campaigns. I want a fancy watch at a, a jewelry store. They were on a Father's Day thing. They had an ugly tie contest. So I had went to six thrift stores, and I got the ugliest tie in the county. They cost me two dollars, and I won an, a very expensive Rolex, right? Really? With, I had the ugliest tie. I won, and so I don't care. I have a Casio. I have an Apple Watch. You know, I don't care. It's just it's all the time. So I turned in that watch. I sold my Rolex that I got for two dollars to help fund my campaign for Congress. 
Because yeah, it's, it's just stuff. stuff. It's just stuff, right? Yeah. So um, I, I hated asking for money. I, I know people need $5 just to eat or drink or pay the rent or buy a gallon of gas. So I felt guilty asking anybody for any money. But that's the lifeblood of a campaign. Campaigns are judged by not necessarily the issues and the person, but they're judged by how much money does that person have. And I think it's disgusting, um, but it's the way things work. Uh, you have to pay for TV ads. You have to pay for radio ads. You have to pay for those darn yard signs in everybody's lawn. I paid $4,000 for a thousand yard signs that cost four bucks a piece to put them all over the counter. Um, and then you have to clean them up. And Well, yes. Yes. I did. And I had college students help. College students can help. Yes. Uh, you need um, door knockers. A college student would like They're to the get brightest. credit. For oh, they get community service community hours for service helping you. High schoolers, too. And That's great. Something I don't know if you're prepared for, but just so that people have the understanding, oh, you ran countywide. What's the cost of one mail out postcard? Ballpark it was 34 ideas. cents then for the stamp. For the stamp. For the stamp. For the helicopter. So, uh, it's 30, 34 cents was the time at the time. So 10 postcards was $3.40. Um, TV ads, I was dropping $1,500 to $3,000 for TV ads. Um, I was getting them filmed at FGCU or by friends with mm. cameras. Friends with cameras, friends with iPhones, friends with media experience. Any of these things that you feel is something that you can contribute in. If you, do, if you don't want to write a check, because Tom is right. Unfortunately, things cost money, and in order to run a campaign, people have to support the person running. This, this is just a fact of life. But in addition to that, if you have like a talent, if you have something that you're good at, we can hook you up with the appropriate candidate. Also, if you have an issue that you feel particularly aligned with, we can hook you up with a candidate who feels the same way that you do. And then you form these relationships with the candidates, right? You do. You do. For example, I now have a relationship with Todd. I met Todd as a volunteer. He was running for office. And that's how I met Connie as well. And these relationships really, I'm oh, sorry, my stomach is growling. These relationships really are when the people are elected, who do they go to when they want to talk about how the community feels? They go to their community members. They come to me and they say, hey, how do you feel about this? This is all interconnected, and, and we really would appreciate your help on all of this. So uh, going back to that, uh, getting feedback from the folks in the community, uh, I post some of our videos. Crystal and I do videos, like 20-minute videos, and we talk about different issues that are related to politics and local, local issues. And so I posted one of those videos on a page in Facebook, because that's my media that I'm good at, um, to a page that they're focused on the rights of nature. So the Florida Rights of Nature group. And they said, well, let you post this, but you know, we want to focus on the rights of nature and water and, and, and our progress with that project. And I said, you know, you're right. And, and we'll, we'll bring up, we'll talk about environment. We'll talk about how politics affect the environment and how the new politics, uh, the mo mo movement to make rights of nature something because, you know, businesses, justice. businesses are people now, according to the Supreme Court. And so why can't a tree be a person or why can't a park or a forest um, have its own rights to being clean and unpolluted and not leveled? Right. And with one of the things that you were mentioning about the fundraising, and, uh, and I, I don't know if people understand necessarily the gravity of it, but even in a small city council race where you have, you know, five, 6,000 residents, you're looking at spending three to four thousand dollars to do a mail out just for that small pocket let alone for doing for state or county or any of those others so it can get quite costly and the unfortunate thing is is yes we all want to you know we still have to pay our electric bills and feed our children and our squirrels and all those other great <laughs> things um but you have to realize that there's a lot of really deep pockets that are not funding, um, that are funding what is not in your best interest. Mm. So even though it is difficult sometimes to pull out that $20 or $50 or $200, even though it's difficult, you have to realize that there is incredibly deep pockets that are funding things that are not necessarily in the best interest of the citizens, of the environment, of our future.
And if That's you want to make market. a difference, you really have to dig deep and, and help out where you can. One of my favorite things, because I also ran um, twice, but one of my favorite things was I had um, a very small group of incredibly wonderful women who took on neighborhoods as a neighborhood captain. We like being social. We like getting to know people. Take your neighborhood and be, I'm going to commit to talking to all of my neighbors about these candidates. And because if there are issues that are important to you and important to your children and important to what's going to be your children's children um, and the squirrels, um, you really need to be that voice and you really need to be that advocate. So even if you can't write a check, you can give a little bit of time and uh, time uh, is crucial. That's awesome. And, and, and that reminds me of, of, I just did a house party at my house for a candidate running for state house, uh, district 80, it's Mitchell Schlayer. So if you can host a house party for six to eight of your friends or neighbors um, who are politically aligned with you that want to support, it, it, it costs you the bag of chips in the pantry. And we will bring the candidate the and our beautiful personalities and our yeah. video camera. And all you have to do is, is smile and, and host. You don't even have to have us there. You can yeah. do it on your own oh, yeah. and just, just invite the candidate. And the candidate with we'll that, that it's a more intimate experience to have the candidate in your home, in your living room or your dining room table. And, and you can ask them those questions and then have your neighbors support that person if, if you agree with what they're, what they're out to do. So house parties are key. House parties are wonderful. It's really like the start of grassroots organizing, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You have the house party and then you talk about what the issue is and then you come up with the plan. It's the kitchen table politics. Mm -hmm. now, I, I'd like to I'd like to uplift something you said. We did do that during the last election. Um, the Democratic Party has precinct committee captains, and then we, ha we, we break it down by an area, by a block, and then Neighborhood. We, yeah, one person like makes sure that all the people in each of their groups and um, the Democratic Party of Lee County has really gotten very organized um, in the past three years. There's been a huge difference. There's a change in leadership. There's an influx of volunteers. And... Um, we could definitely coordinate with any candidate support like that. And, Large scale or small scale. And I know personally that during the last election, um, we were part of this Zoom group of women who were running, supporting women, like you said. And we would get together and we would say, how are you doing? You know, do you need help? How's this? There's a lot of um, community support right now for candidates to step forward and for volunteers to step into opportunities. Absolutely. Anything else you want to? No, well, thank add you for your closing? time and thanks for setting this up for us. Um, um, we we want to make our, our uh, make an impactful dis difference every election. Um, I'm not running. I'm not running in 2024 either. But I'm I'm dedicated to helping uh, the blue um, uh, team and any candidate that, that's out there that's considering. Give me a call if you just want to bounce it off um, or email me Todd at ToddTrueX.com. Uh, and I'll, I'll steer you in the right direction, whether you want more information about your district or the elected office or if it pays and uh, what it takes to win. I can help you calculate those numbers. And it's not just the blue. There's a lot of purple people out there. I, I love purple. <laughs> I was going to comment on that. There's a lot of purple people <laughs> out there. there's purple in my because, shirt. Because, um, you know, and, and, and Todd knows when him and I met, I was a registered Republican, had been a registered Republican my entire life. Um, but my party left me long ago. And... Todd and I got to be really good friends. And he's like, are you sure you're a Republican? And I was like, yes, I just have values. And, and, what a breath of fresh air. and, and, and there was a point that I have changed my political Did affiliation, but there are a no, lot no, no, of, no, I don't take <laughs> but there are a lot of people that are in that purple area where we don't necessarily identify with one party or the other. We're not sure where we are, but we know what's important. Can I and if that? you know, what's important, this is the way to make an impact. This is the way to make a difference and not just, you know, don't just sit and complain on Facebook. Oh, um, man, there's a but, lot of that. But get out there and do something. And um, I think this that's is your chance to make a difference uh, in your own small way or in a large way. Um, I, we welcome it. I'd, we like need to, it. I'd like to comment on the purple thing. Um, so I looked at the numbers in Lee County. We've all looked at the numbers in Lee County and, you know, more people have disenrolled from both parties and have determined that they are independent. And that says a lot to me. It says that we have to stop putting people into 
boxes. We have to stop shifting people into us and them. And that we're is, all American. That is actually a conversation that Todd and I had in the beginning mm -hmm. that we're looking for leadership. We're looking for people who care, who share our core values, who, who believe in the same things. We're not just dismissing people as Republicans and Democrats. And also, we understand how we all have to work together. Amen. Todd and I sit in these spaces with elected Republicans, and, and we coalition, I coalition all the time with people who are independent, progressive, uh, Republican, conservative. And, and I think- Green Party, Libertarians. Yes, once we step out of this us and them, we're ending the cycle that is separating us as a country right now. Yeah. We're saying no, that we are going to shape our community, right? We're Amen, not going to divide people up. So I think that that's important to say because I do get pushback from people about that. And I want to clearly state that, that I am here as Crystal. I am here as a mother, as an advocate, as a resident of this community. I was born at Lee Memorial Hospital because they didn't even have a hospital in Cape Coral when I was born. I have gone to Cape Elementary and I went to Cape High School before they desegregated. Are you running for office? I have a vested interest and I'm tired of the us and them. I want us to work together Amen. to move forward. And that's why I would ask everybody to tune into our shows, to listen to what we have to say with an open mind and an open heart and also a sense of humor, right? Because we joke around Sometimes. a lot. If, if you'd okay. like to follow us um, on Facebook, you can follow Crystal Dawn Siscon, and that's C is in cat, Z is in zebra, Y is in yellow, S is in Scott, C is in cat, O is in October, N is in November, or Todd Truex. T R U A X. Um, I've got a couple of different uh, profiles. One of them got hacked when I was running for Congress. I don't know. I blame the Russians. Why not? Let's blame them. And then, so you want the one where my picture is my back turned to the camera, and my the back of my T-shirt says "Do say gay." So I'm wearing a hat. So that's that's the one where I'm at. And I have room for maybe it. I don't know. I'm hitting the cap. I got like 4,700 friends. So I'll be glad to be your friend. Um, and then you can you. follow me or whatever. Uh, and we do, I post that video and I pin it to my page. And if you click on my profile and you click videos, there's a playlist. And the playlist says political prattle. And it has the last... I just did that, yeah. I did. Last night. She's a techie. I'm not. Um, it has three of our videos the previous videos facebook deleted them for some reason yeah yeah but i was able to save these last three and um ho hopefully we'll be doing it once a week when when you return from your great adventure yeah yeah and thank you so much for this opportunity yeah, thank you very much thanks connie that was a great interview and thanks to crystal and todd not only for taking the time to be with us but also for briefing us on what they're doing and importantly, why and how they're doing it. And I don't know about you, but for me, uh, some of the greatest value of the conversation came toward the end. Um, two messages, lessons really, from Crystal and Todd that I think we can all follow. First, do what you can, do what we can to make other people successful. That's what Crystal and Todd are doing in terms of spending a lot of time, devoting time to help others be successful in running for office. And second, very importantly, politically, we need to do everything we can to make sure we are not contributing to the political divide. Too easy to say, hey, the others are doing that, I'm not. But time and time again, I'm guilty. What we do and what we say divides rather than unites. That's so critical for democracy and democracy's prospects. Well, for Connie Bennett Martin, I'm Frank Fear for Women's March Fort Myers. We hope you enjoyed today's conversation, and we certainly hope you'll be with us next time on Community Conversation. Take care, everyone.